Yeah. Look at Ahed Tamimi. Go on the I internet and look at Ahed Tamimi. Tell me what colour her eyes are. Colour her hair. You're European. You're European. Is Ahed Tamimi European? Is Ahed Tamimi European? Is Ahed Tamimi European? Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. What the Arabs don't realise is many Arabs believe they're fighting a colonial war. So when the British came and colonised mm -hmm. the land and took control, the British had a big empire in a country. So if you breed the British and you drive them out, the British just go back to Britain. The Jews have been slaughtered in the Arab world, in the Christian, in the European world. What do you call the state of Israel today? What are you talking you about? Why? Because we were you the power, you destroyed the world. This is Muslim supremacy. I'm the greatest fan of Muslims. I love Islam, I love Muslims. But when you say I'm only good when I'm under you, I say nonsense. I don't want to be your dimmy, I want to be your equal. I'm not allowed into the cities of Mecca and Medina. I'm not allowed to practice Judaism in Saudi Arabia. And you want to talk to me about equality. You can visit. Why you wanted to go to Mecca and Medina? Because, they say, because I want to view, I want to go to the Kaaba. I want to go to the Kaaba. Why can't I go to the Kaaba? Why? Okay, let me ask you why. Because, it, because your race, your religion discriminates against me. Argument. Blue eyes and blonde people, they live there. Have you, have you seen, have you seen, uh, let me finish. Let me, so I'll show you, I'll show you my DNA, which says that I'm from the Middle East. Yeah, the Middle East. Yeah, you. Yeah, me. I'll show you. I don't trust the Middle East. You don't trust the DNA test. Okay, fine. You don't trust the DNA test. I'm educated. Why are you from the Middle East? Yeah. Middle East. So, blonde, Middle East. So, I've got a lot, so I've got a lot of Europeans. So, I, so let, let me, let, let me answer, let me answer, let me answer. I have more great grandparents that aren't Jewish and are European, yeah? So most of my great grandparents are not those, but they're, they're not Ashkenazi, they're not, they're European. They're, they're like Christian, white, white Christian, yeah? They're not Jewish. Yeah, even I, who have very watered down Jewish DNA, a percentage of my DNA is traced, and if you look on the map, because it's with family tree DNA, um, very small, sub. No, 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 but what I'm saying. No, no, not Judaism, it's, uh, it doesn't matter. This is a tangent, this is a tangent. But to come, come back to your point. Are you saying all the Israeli people, population now in Israel, they know not Russian from Russia? Yeah, yeah. And they are. No, I'm saying, no. So Russia, you have a right to go back to Israel. So if you are a Muslim or Arab, belong there and Palestinians, they have no right to go back. Well, okay, first of all, you have nothing to do Mecca with the Palestinians. Listen, listen, listen. You ask a question, you have to listen to it. Have you, have you? Have you can I, can, you can build world. They modern keep from country their house. From on religious conflict. Israel, I'm, saying, I'm not saying Israel Arab. isn't a religious country. Huh? Israel isn't a religious yeah, country. It's not. It's not. It's, not. So it's a secular Muslim, country. If you're Muslim, you can live there as well. So, so, no, no, no. Circular. The Jews, uh, so so Palestinian, can, Palestinian, they can go Are back you going to let me talk or are you just going to talk at me? Okay. So, 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 so you're, you're jumping from point to point and we're running around the houses. So you be quiet. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So first you said... Arab, people who live in that region don't have blonde hair and blue eyes. One of the most famous Palestinians alive today is a 17 or 18 year old woman called, uh, yeah, called Ahed Tamimi. She, she was arrested, yeah. What colour is her hair and what colour her eyes? Green. green. Green eyes and blonde curly hair. But do you believe that we all come from the same source, yeah? We're all human, yeah? Yeah, yeah we're all human. So, no, Israel is not, is not a, a, a Jewish state, that's what you're saying. So, no, no, I'm it's saying not it's not a religious state. It's not religious. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, 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 okay, let, let me answer it really, really easy if, so you can understand. I'm, Muslim, I'm, I'm, guess, I'm guessing you also, or not all, but I'm guessing a lot yeah. of you support the idea of a Palestinian yeah. state. Yeah. No, but, no, no. Okay, okay. Don't get no. No, no. Can I please make a point? Yeah. States are, when we talk about national liberation movement and the right for people to self-determine, self-determination, we talk about peoplehood. And so if you accept that the Palestinians are a people and they're claiming
claim to a state is based on their peoplehood, so too are the Jews a people. Yeah. And we have a right to... But they, had, they, had the same, you said they didn't have a problem. They didn't have a problem. They lived together. We're not claiming that. You do what you are. Anyway, what was, what was your point? Make a different issue. Israel, they come from Israel, country. Okay. Okay. okay, so... Where have you been before that? So I'm just, so let's say, let me finish. Let's say the Palestinians, like they came from somewhere, they stayed there for a long, 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 long time. But how come someone come after, like all, all, all this year, is people who migrated from where, say they're from, will this give you the right okay. to come back and say no? So I'll, I'll respond, I'll respond. It, hopefully I'll get to finish my point. So Pakistan in 1947 was created. Can I just say, can I please speak to her? If you want to go heckle someone, go somewhere else. So just let me finish a point. No, no, let sh I answered your question. She asked me a question. Did you answer my question? No, I, I, let me speak to her. You came over. We were having a conversation. Every time I try to answer her, you butt in. Can I at least finish my point with her? I'm angry. We're not getting anywhere. Yeah. No, no, we're not angry. So in 1947, Pakistan was created. Over a million people were forced to move between Pakistan and India. Nobody questions the right for Pakistan to exist. By, what do you mean by the By both of those there was a massive war. Hundreds of thousands of people were slaughtered. Um, if not millions of people were slaughtered. It was a horrendous Over There we go. Over a million people were killed in this war. Way bigger than the Israel-Palestine conflict, which in the last 70 years, less than 100,000 people have been killed on both sides. So Pakistan and India, way bigger war, way more people moved, state was created, nobody nobody questioned. So, so they're not the same people. So someone from... Okay, so to, to respond to your question. So the Jews had never left the land. So you asked about the Jewish kingdom. So there was a Jewish kingdom that stood there for 1,500 years. And you're right, it was destroyed by the Romans around 2,000 years ago. Many of the Jews remained in the land. And they never left the land. And Jews lived throughout what was then Muslim-controlled land. So you had different caliphates. The biggest one for the longest period of time, I believe, was the Ottoman Caliphate. And the Ottoman Caliphate covered most of the world. It's the second largest empire I think there's ever been. And Jews, Muslims, Christians, all different people lived within the Ottoman Empire. When the Ottoman Empire collapsed after they lost World War I, there was a power vacuum. And what happened was the British and the Allies said, we're going to give the different people who lived in the Ottoman Empire the right to self-determination. So the Hashemites took control of Jordan, Iraq, so they got Syria for a little bit, I think, as well. They gave they helped create Saudi Arabia. So all of these states were created for different Arab people that were living in that region. Yeah? So the Jews were living there as well. The Jews were also in that region. And we were given a tiny, tiny, tiny slither of land. And the land we never left, and the land that we had a, a kingdom in for 1,500 years. And so in 1948, when Israel was rightfully created, created as you pointed out, it was based on the, the belief by the international community that just like many Arabs had the right to self-determination, so too the Jews also have a right to a homeland in that region. Not at the expense of someone else, but they had the right to When this country created, the Jewish people, they've been given options, not only to be in Israel or Palestine, you've been given options to go to establish your country in Uganda, so in another country, in another country. So, another mean, country. It's, it's, it's so if you have options and you've been thinking about options, that that's that means there is some issue. So, so, so can I respond? That? It's, it's course, yeah. So it was called the Uganda Plan, yeah. and it was in Kenya. And basically, Herzl went to, I can't remember who he went to, someone in the British government and said, look, if you ever become the sovereign power in this region, we would like to establish a homeland in this area. Uh, no, this is but way before the Holocaust, way, way before the Holocaust. And what happened was they said, well, we have control of Uganda, Kenya, we can give you a, a homeland there. So Herzl took it to the Jewish National Congress, the Zionist National Congress, and he said, look, we've been offered a homeland in, in it was actually Kenya, but we told the Uganda plan, really. But we've been offered a, we, we, we've been, we've been offered a homeland 
Van Der, shall we take it? And the Congress unanimously said, no, we've got no claim to Uganda. We never lived there as a people. We don't have Jews living there. I mean, we have very few Jews living there today. Our ancestral homeland is Israel. That's the only place we can entertain the concept of a Jewish state. We can't go and live in someone else's house. Because if it was Uganda, then what right have Jews got to go and create a homeland in Uganda or Kenya or Poland? whichever country you want to call What right have Jews got yes, to live there? We, were, we, we, we never had a kingdom there for 1,500 years. We've got no claim to live there. We never, we never had a kingdom in. We had a kingdom in Yemen. In Yemen, we did not in Saudi Arabia. Kaiba, but it wasn't a kingdom. It was a, it was a city where we lived with pagans and various different people. These aren't kingdoms. You miss it. A kingdom is a place where you have a government seat, where you have either a king or some sort of administrative body. A Senate that governs the land. You have defined borders. We never had that. What we did have in Yemen was there was a community that converted to Judaism, and they went and conquered a large. They went and conquered a large space of land in that region, and they established a kingdom there. But it, this was based on a people that had converted to Judaism. They weren't part of B'nai Israel. I mean, there were Yemenite Jews who go back thousands of years, but this was a community that converted to Judaism. They considered, I believe, they considered Christianity as well. If you are all Kimiarit, you'll be all right. And you say all of them, huge numbers, they've been converted to Judaism. They did. I mean, that's, that's, no, no, no. So the Yemenite Jews today are different to the. Can you pronounce it? I can never pronounce that. I really did. Him and right? No, I don't. Are you from that region? Yes. Yeah. So I pray with an Adani community. I, so my, the, the, the prayer right that I follow is from Yemen. It's called um, the Baladi Nusra. It's, I believe the Yemenites have preserved the most authentic codification of Jewish law and they practice Judaism in its purest form. So I know Yemen relatively well and the Jewish community there goes back thousands of years. But that's separate from the kingdom that converted to Judaism and then converted to Islam much later. I'm not in favour of it. Did the Jews when they moved to what called Israel today, were they struggling somewhere else? This team moved from other countries to yeah. Europe and wherever. Did they have, were they struggling? Were they poor? Did they so, not have homes? So, so, they have, so, so I'll answer the question. So you write for it. So, Jews or Israeli Jews and Palestinians, and most of us, not us because I don't live there, but most of them, whether they're Palestinian or Israeli Jewish, actually moved there relatively recently. In, I'm going to answer your question, don't worry. In 1882, there were 270,000. In 1882, according to an Ottoman census, there were 270,000 Jews. In 1946, the British took the census of the area, and there's 1.26 million Muslim Arabs living there. It was the largest explosion of Muslims or Arabs in the Middle East because you had people moving from all the surrounding states because the British were investing huge sums of money into the region and Jews and Arabs moved there for economic reasons it was much better income and so many Israelis so nothing to do with the, uh, claiming the, the land so 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 this is it okay we're, we're, ju we're jumping around but I come to the settlements, I promise. Got anything, and then I go get back to my wife. So I'll do the settlements and I'll go see my wife. If let's say we have a person here who moved, you know, we don't know. But it, has it got anything to do with claiming the land? Is it part of a relief? So, so, so again, the Jews that were living there have the right to self-determination. Once they establish a nation, it's That's up to them to set their own immigration policy. Just like That's if the Palestinians, the Palestinians get a state, they will be able That's to say that it's based. up to us. And if we want That's to give the right to return to every Palestinian that left in 1948 so and it's no place that Israelis or anyone in the international community say, no, guys, sorry, you can't say the other Palestinians can come back. Because every state with sovereignty comes the right to set your immigration policy. But Polish people and Russian people. But I'm a Polish I'm a Polish Jew. And I've got Middle Eastern DNA. You have rights in Live in Israel. Yeah. You have right to live in Israel. Okay, so DNA lies. No, 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 live in Israel. Live in Israel. No, 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 lies. Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. Mr. Speaker, you know, the the Jews have done. I'm giving you the Jews have done. They've won in the. Say, you barely got a beard. Who are you to be lecturing the Jews on who they are? The Jews have been clever for one thing. They have won the war of diplomacy. They have beaten the Arabs a few times, several times in fact. That's the question of. 
survival. You've survived, but the only way you can survive is you remain strong, just defend yourself. Otherwise, the Arabs will wipe you out. So I, I, that's, 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 I, I, I don't know if you agree with me. No, I agree. And to, to that point, what the Arabs don't realize is many Arabs believe they're fighting a colonial war. So when the British came and colonized mm -hmm. the land and took control, the British had a big empire in a country. Mm -hmm. So if you breed the British and you drive them out, the British just go back to Britain. The Jews have been slaughtered in the Arab world, in the Christian, in the European world. It is different. Can I just finish my point? Can I just finish my point? They belong to a political country. Mate, we've been talking about Palestinians for the last hour. You've just turned up and you're trying to dominate the conversation. You're diverting. I'm responding. And I want to come up to this lady's question. She's been very politely heckling. Arabs have not understood the game of diplomacy. They beat you every second in the war. When you say Jewish, go back to the Arab world. Judaism is a religion. It's not a religion. Judaism is not a Judaism is not a religion. Judaism is a people. This is what we started with. So if you want to become a Christian, what do you say? You say, I believe in Jesus as the Son of God, and you become a Christian. If I want to become a Muslim, I say, La ilaha illallah, and then I continue, and I become a Muslim. In Judaism, you can't become Jewish. If, can I just finish? Can I finish a point? If I say, I believe in the, so if someone says, I believe in the five books of Moses, I believe that Moses is a prophet of God, I don't become Jewish. So, so, so what, how do you become Jewish? How do you become Jewish? You become Jewish like you become British. In the sense that if I want to move to Britain, I have to be accepted by the British people. If I want to convert to Judaism, I go before the court of rabbis, a panel of judges, and they judge whether I'm being sincere. And if they say that this person's being sincere, we say, you can join the Jewish people. I'm just explaining. It's not a religion, it's a people. So what do we have today in Israel? Which? Are you a Muslim? Uh, you can I ask what your religion is? I'm spiritual. You're spiritual, okay. So I don't come to you and tell you how to be spiritual. The most annoying thing for the Jewish people is when people come to us and say that you're a religion. Do you know what? In Biblical Hebrew, there's no such word as religion. We don't have a word. In modern Hebrew, yes, but in Biblical Hebrew, we don't have a word. We believe we're people with a land and we have a set of laws which comes from the Torah and Talmud. But we don't see ourselves as a religion. We see ourselves as a people. Please, who do we have in Israel today? Do we have uh, Israelis or do we have Jews? So in Israel is a modern secular state. Fifteen percent of the population, between fifteen percent and twenty percent, are Arabs, and they are a mixture of Christian and Muslim. The question: Who the state of Israel accepts as a resident? I just told you. So fifteen to twenty, fifteen to twenty percent of them aren't Jewish. Yeah. So what are they? They're, they're Christian and Muslim. And they get the same benefit as, as uh, exactly the same. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Israel is a secular democracy. Many people think it's a religious state. Israel was the first Western, it's like in the Middle East, but it was a Western nation to have a female head of state. If I move today to Israel, mate, yeah, I'll respond when you say something intelligent. So think, 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 and then I'll respond to you. You're telling me you have Arabic. If I move today to Israel, then we have the same. same Look at Ahed Tamimi. Go on the I internet and look at Ahed Tamimi. Tell me what colour her no, eyes are and colour hair. You're European. You're European. Is Ahed Tamimi no, European? European? Is Ahed Tamimi European? Palestinians. Is Ahed Tamimi European? Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. You're from Europe or Eastern Europe or whatever. You're saying you don't get the rights to some things. Okay, sorry, I'll stick, I'll stick on you. Yeah. I'm just getting heck on the Would they be? Would they benefit from all the benefit that in? Israel. Yes, so I'll give you an example. Christian uh, Arabs. Yes, no? yes, so, I'm, I'm, yes. yes, yes, and I'm going to give so, you an example. That's it. Can I give you an example. Let me ask you another question. Is, can, can I just finish? Can I, right. the, 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 the religious group that performs best in education in Israel are Christian Arabs. They outperform any other religious group, including Jews. So the best performing religious group in Israel aren't Jews, they're Christian Arabs. Christian Arabs in Israel are phenomenally well educated. They get the best positions in the, in the universities. 
they come on doctors, nurses. So, as an example, the top judge in Israel is a Christian Arab called Salem Gibran. He sent a Jewish prime minister and a Jewish president to jail. So, what's the point to go into that country and make it state of Israel in the first place then? Because the Jews. Then you let it. <laughs> okay, so, so it's a good question. And the reason why the Jews went there is because we were slaughtered by the Arabs, we were slaughtered by the Christians, we were slaughtered all around the world. No, so you say that you are. We call them Mizrahim, we don't call them Jew Arabs. Okay, there's difference. So, 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 I'm not calling you, I'm just trying to answer. Yeah, yeah, they speak Arabic though. And the community I pray with, they sound like when they, when they pray, they sound almost like the Hebrew sounds Arabic. Yeah. Because they, I mean, the language. What most people don't realize is Christian, Judaism and Islam are so close as religions. We've got so much in common. And modern political wars are driving us apart, and they shouldn't. I'm not against a Palestinian state, I'm not against the Palestinians. Have you ever thought that probably you know the people you know who are now in Israel, who you know moved now to Israel, have been misled, and they are misled, and they are taking part in something that which they don't know. No, so they just you know they've been offered some benefits and stuff like that, you know, some attraction to be there. No, but they've been part of a big, big. Have you ever thought that? So you, do you do you think? I put it. I put it very very politely. Yeah. I've studied the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for around 15 to 20 years. Yeah, I've been an Orthodox Jew, like practicing my religion for around 10 years. Yeah, um, and so, so, so okay, but this is a fair point. But practicing what most people would recognize as, as a, we call a big Shomer Mitzvot, which is following the commandments, uh, guarding the commandments. And so, I've been, so it's something which I've given so much thought to. I run a relatively successful Zionist organization in the UK. I have tens of thousands the followers of it. So I give it an awful lot of thought. And I absolutely feel with complete conviction that Israel didn't do what you described. They didn't come and get tricked into taking someone else's land. We never left. Now what I want, I want... I, so you said, have you ever entertained the idea? So I'm saying I've given it a lot more thought than you, is what I'm saying. If you never left, why you needed the British to help you? And why you brought other people from other countries so, so, to be it's, there. It's a good point. It's a, it's a very good question. Can I just answer the question? It's a very good question and then I'll come to the settlement. So the question is, why did the Jews or the, the early Zionists need the help from the British to create a state? What most people don't realize is that every single state surrounding Israel was created with the British help. Why did the Hashemites need help to create Jordan and Syria and Iraq? Why did why did the Lebanese need help creating Lebanon? Why did the Egyptians? They didn't need any help. They ever fought. Do you know who the United Nations considers a Palestinian refugee? The United Nations recognizes any Palestinian, the Arab, that was living there for two years, two years, as a Palestinian refugee. So you could have been living in Egypt for 40 years, you then moved to the British Mandate of Palestine, which by the way included Jordan, and if you were there from 46 onwards, you were considered Palestinian. Since then, the so in this answer to my question, but, uh, sorry, what was the question? An answer to my question. I, I thought it was, but repeat the question and I'll... Yeah, I just asked why you needed the help of the British. Okay, I'm not asking it again. I'm because saying because every... give another okay, okay, I'll explain. If you, if you yeah. I'll, ex left, I'll explain. If you never left, why you needed to Okay, it's, it's, a really, really, it's a really, really, really easy answer. When the Ottoman Empire collapsed, the British became the sovereign power there. They were given a temporary mandate of the land, so given temporary control of the land on the British that they helped the indigenous people that were living in that region to create a homeland. So within one year of getting the mandate, the first thing they did, they divided Palestine in two and gave Jordan, which was 70% of the land, to the Arabs. Yeah? So why did, why did Jordan need help from the British to create a state? Because Britain were in control of the land. The Jordanians you know, already, they ruled Saudi Arabia. The Hashemites, exactly. They from Saudi Arabia, they pushed them.
him to Jordan. Please, please. Yeah. This is please, please. please. Really then now, the, what I want you know your history, please by the way. Tell us, explain to us. I really yeah, want you know, to know where these They've been waiting patiently from? for the settler. So I'm first came so I first came. To I know, I know, but they have been like waiting. I have been I'll, come, I'll come back to your question because you keep on taking it's my last question, and then you ask another five. So the settlements. So the settlements is the most divisive of all the issues. And so the first thing I would ask you is, can you define what you consider a settlement, and then I can respond to what my position is on those. So, for instance, is Tel Aviv a settlement? If you if you apply and that's interesting to you as well because you asked the question first. So, to either of you, is Tel Aviv a settlement? So, Israel's there to stay. It's not they're taking um, land near the Golan Heights. Okay, so the Golan Heights you're saying, so not Tel Aviv? Well, no, no, I'm not saying Tel Aviv, I don't know about Tel Aviv, I know the Golan Heights okay, and the Gaza Strip. So, okay, so the Gaza Strip, there's, the, there's, no, settlement, there's no settlements in the Gaza Strip, they disengaged in 2005. You, 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 what you mean is the Golan Heights and the West Bank, I think you mean. What, how about you, what do you consider a question, I have to understand your question, so... Okay, so... What, what is, what, what is okay, so... so People consider settlements different things. So some people will say Tel Aviv is a settlement. Some people will say Hebron is a settlement. Other people will say Ariel is a settlement. So these are all different cities in Israel and the West Bank. What about what, sorry? In, what? In Gaza. Okay, answer his question. What do you think is settlement is? What, what's it? Name one settlement in Gaza. Name one settlement. Until you tell us that rule. <laughs> Would you, in the future, in four years' time, build even more settlements? So how does that support your point? It doesn't you support even your know point. What my point is, I said there's no settlements in Gaza, and you said you yes, there is. No, I said there's no settlements in Gaza. There's no the Jews. Okay, Israel disengaged from Gaza in 2005. Since then, it's pretty much been under a Hamas military dictatorship, and the only people. Okay, I'm going to come back to you. I'm sorry, this is a little distracting. Anyone want? Watching on the camera, anyone watching on YouTube or wherever this is going, Google settlements in Gaza, you'll see they were dis disengaged in 2005. The settlements were destroyed by the Palestinians who were living there, and there's nothing left. Just like the settlements in the Sinai were also disengaged. Where there are what some people consider settlements are the West Bank. Some people may consider Jerusalem a settlement, some may people may consider um, Tel Aviv. And so to understand how to respond to your question, I have to understand what you consider the borders of Israel to be. Or if there are no borders at all because you believe it shouldn't be there. And if you believe it shouldn't be there, it's a very different conversation to if you believe in the Okay, so my bot Okay, so I'll respond to what my, my what my personal preference is. So I used to be a huge two-state solution advocate. And what that meant was a Palestinian state and an Israeli state. I've now changed my position to I don't care. It doesn't mean I'm cool. What I mean is whether it's a one state, a two state, a 99 state, all that's important is we secure peace between the, the Israelis and the Palestinians. All that is important. And however, so I was recently in Ramallah meeting with a very senior organization which advises the Palestinian Authority on government policy. And they told, they told me, according to their surveys, this is the Palestinians, according to their surveys, between 18 and 22 year old Palestinians living in the West Bank, they want to live under Israel. I said, are you nuts? Why the 18 to 22 year old? And he said, because they look at the Israelis Israelis throwing their politicians in jail and we want to throw Abu Mazen in jail and we can't and what they then say is they say once we live in Israel eventually we'll become the majority then we can uh, live in either one so I'm saying most people in the West most people living here have no idea what's going on there they have no idea that we, we read what we read according to the propaganda papers that we digest so we have no idea whatsoever <laughs> I'm saying most of us yes most of us yes really how many of these people do you know okay, so very recently and then we can. So when people talk about settlements, I think the general reasonable suggestion here is not where people are living, but if there's peaceful, if there's peaceful environments being set up. Yeah. Example: the other day there was a 20-year-old uh, paramedic, yeah. Razan Najjar, who's a paramedic treating protesters, and was was yeah. shot. Yeah. So this is what people are really worried about. I think, is, is the violence, so, so, no, no, the violent displacement. So, of so one of the the most horrendous things about conflict 
is when innocent people get killed. Sometimes... Blame Hamas. Can I be one? Can you go heckle someone else? No! I like heckling you, because you... I'll tell you what, it's been lovely chatting. He's right, he's right, I'm doing it, not right. He's really nasty, he's racist. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, look at it, let him. We are here to defend this color. If you are just giving these things, we are not going to get anywhere. He's a racist. No, you are. Okay. No, I'm not. You are, because we are discussing, we have a rational, yeah, rational discussion. We are having rational discussion. So, so, put this back down. Before we get ahead of that, I've got to go back to my wife soon anyway. I did say that like half an hour ago. But um, so, truthfully, what my, my personal position is, I've got hundreds and hundreds of Palestinian friends. I've got hundreds of Israeli friends, and for me, peace is the most important part. Now, when we concentrate on the conflict, what we concentrate on is the horrible things, and so. Some of those things, like I'll give you, there are things that is individuals within the IDF do, which I consider repulsive, because it's a military army, and like like any nation, you have good people and bad people, and anyone that does bad, wearing an Israeli uniform or representing the Israeli state, should be hauled in front of the judges and receive the, the harshest and strictest of punishments. So with the medic, I know it's been investigated at the moment, and if it turns out that she was a medic and she was innocent and she was helping people and she was killed that for me would be cold-blooded murder and whoever did it should go to jail if it turns out like other instances that actually there was more going on then obviously the consequences will be different so I'll give you an example there was a young baby tragically killed tragically killed not so long ago when the, the 62 protesters were killed when they opened the embassy and they in Jerusalem that was horrific now of those 62 50 were Hamas operatives Hamas came out and claimed they were because Hamas, because Hamas claimed on national television. Do I believe Hamas? Can I just finish a point, please, David? Um, <laughs> he knows you, David. Um, isn't it funny how? You know, I took the video down off you because I didn't want to embarrass you and your family. Oh really? Yeah. So, so just don't call me a nasty piece of work. No, but you are a nasty piece of work. Speak to us. Okay. Okay. So, so what I was trying to say is, now the baby that was killed on that day. At first, Hamas came out and said the. Israelis killed the baby. What then happened was a doctor, a Hamas doctor in a hospital, because in, in Gaza, Hamas run all the social services. So it basically, if you've got a job in Gaza, you work for Hamas, because they run everything. And so a doctor who works for the, who basically works for Hamas, so actually this baby had health problems. And Hamas have since come out and said that this baby actually wasn't killed by the IDF. It was killed because of pre-existing health problems. I believe for Israel to, to call itself a secular democracy and a moral state, it has to prosecute its citizens, whether they're in the IDF or whether they're, 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 so they're why it's doesn't it? Not the brother, brother, so you can't come, come up first with the idea of the state of Israel. Who came in the first one? Who, who first, first comes in with the idea of the state of Israel? No, I don't. I know all of you. I no idea what a nasty piece of work is. We know all of you. We know, all right, that's okay. It did exist before. I mean, I'm talking about the reason. So do you know every Jew when they pray? Jews pray three times a day to return Turn to Jerusalem and rebuild Jerusalem. We see ourselves as a people connected to the land and have them since time immemorial. That doesn't mean we can persecute people, oppress people, anything like that. But it means just like other people have the right to self-determination, so too do we. So it's not one person came up with it. It's the, it is the essence of the Jewish people. It's our connectedness to that land. Who said, let's go for it. Here we go. We're going to have to organize ourselves. We're going to have to do this now. Are you trying to elude that theory? Is that what you're trying to get to? Are you building a straw man? Are you trying to say Theodore Herzl? No, no, I'm just trying to Okay, so, so in, every gen in every generation, for the last 2,000 years, up until 70 years ago, there were Jews that were saying we need to get back, we need, those that weren't living there were saying we need to return to Israel, we need to rebuild the state. Even the Orthodox Jews today, the tiny sect that are against the state of Israel, what they're praying for, they're saying is we're waiting for the Messiah.
Messiah, and when he does, we can rebuild our temple. So even the Jews that are against, the religious Jews that are against Israel today are dreaming of going and building a state. This idea it's, 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 so this is the thing what most people God don't promised us. So God promised God is an estate agent. He promised the Jews their okay. land. Actually, I, this guy's trying to. I just want to respond to what he's saying. One of the nicest. If I take your bag and I'm not giving about to you, what are you going to do to me? So you, you missed, the, you missed you the beginning of the. I already answered that at the beginning of the conversation. Are you going to kill me to take it back? Huh? If I have your bag, am I going to kill you? I'm not going to kill you if you take my bag. No, I, I'm, I'm uh, quite a peaceful person. This is how it is in Palestine. This is how it is in Palestine. Okay, I'm going to go. Then you, then I'm going to go. Sorry, I didn't really go. Do you think they are happy about helping to build Israel in 1948? Okay, so to respond to that, just to respond, Britain didn't. When the United Nations voted to create the state of, to recognize the state of Israel, Israel, Britain refused to vote. Britain refused to vote. So Britain abstained. So Britain, what happened was Britain was given the mandate of the, the, the land on the condition they created. You're having in your facts right, you're wrong on that. Um, so Britain, Britain was given a temporary mandate of the land on the condition they create a Jewish national home. That's the that was based on the Balfour Declaration. That's why they were given the mandate. Britain, did, the first thing Britain did was they created out of mandatory Palestine, Jordan, and then because of the civil war between the Jews and the Arabs, they said we can't deal with this, and they gave the problem to the United Nations. The United Nations says we're going to vote, the, the, we're going to partition, the, we recommend partitioning the land into an Arab state, into an Arab state and a Jewish state. The United Nations were in 1947 um, to, parti to partition the land into an Arab and a Jewish state. Yeah. So when they took the vote on that, Britain refused to take part. Britain refused to vote. So Britain didn't create Israel. Israelis created Israel, and the United Nations voted to recognize this, and Israel refused. I mean, sorry, Britain refused. So, okay, you had one question. Do you believe in a two-state nation? So I just, I did just answer that. Just answer me. Okay, okay, okay. Very, very brief. I used to be good. Don't shut me. Okay, I'm going to go. Do you believe in a two-state nation? So, as I have said before, I used to be the biggest fan of the two-state solution. Now, I don't care whether it's one state, two state, 99 state. What I care about is Arabs and Jews and Christians and Muslims living in peace in that land. And whatever solution, what solution brings that about? 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 Are you going to support that? Do I believe in an Arab state nation? Um, because you said, it, I don't care whether so it's let, one, let, two, 99 let, or whatever. Let me respond, let me respond then. If the, the Palestinian Authority changed Article 6 of their charter, so Article 6 says that any Jew that wasn't living here before the Zionist conquest, which most people interpret as 19... Yes, I understand. Can I, can I respond? 19... 19... Okay, so 1917. Um, any Jew that was living there before that, they said, can live in a Palestinian state. Any Jew that came afterwards, we're going to kick out. Now, I can't support creating half a million Jewish refugees. So for me, I will support a Palestinian state if it says that the half a million Jews that live there have the... If it says that the half a million Jews that live... It, half a million Jews that live in that land can also become Palestinian citizens. And then I've got to go see my wife. It's a lovely day. Like have a good day on the I hope, I hope one day you will be converted. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely there are not, not all the Jews. Not all the Jews agree that you should have a state, or even you should have a capital. Yeah, yeah, the overwhelming majority of Jews do. A tiny, 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 tiny sect. But you go to the Bible and do you deserve, or do you have, or do you should, or you should you deserve, or should you have, or are you going according to that? You know, Dr. Tawra, that you should have a land, and you should have a capital, and you should have a capital for Jerusalem. Is that written in the Bible, in your Torah? Yes, that, that's the, the whole Torah is that. King David moved the capital to Jerusalem. He made Jerusalem the capital. I'm not saying the Zionists, but I'm saying a lot of the so sect I'm of the Jews. You're you, 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 you made a mistake, you said, as long as you live in peace. That's not a mistake. You don't, no, I want to live in peace. You made a statement. Oh, statement. I thought you said a mistake. You said that you can live 
on any land as long as you live in peace. No, I never said I'll that. I'll tell you something. I never once said that. Is that. The only time, the only time you're going to be in peace and you're going to live in peace, if you live not in your own states, you make your own states because if you live, if you live your own, in, on, in your main or own states and you make your own states, then definitely you will also create divisions among yourselves as a Jews because there are many sects you don't even agree on one principle. There are, there are many sects. Go to Jerusalem now. You see I how many. Jerusalem sects. No, I'm times. just saying. Go to Jerusalem and go to the middle of the city of Jerusalem and you see many sects. The Israeli among themselves, they are not agree. Some of them are orthodox. Okay. Some of them sects. With, 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 with the greatest, with, with the greatest respect, <laughs> Muslims are slaughtering Muslims around the world yes, today. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I am not against Muslims having a state. I, I cannot come to you and say the, the Jordanians can't have I'm a state, the Syrians the can't have a state, the, the Saudi Arabians can't, because they're killing each other. I'm not That's a, a stupid I'm argument. I'm not, I'm not against the Jews as a religion. Can I say something? Can I say something? When the Jews, when the Jews, when the Jews, when the Jews, when the Jews live in the Arab world before the state of Jerusalem, when the Jews lived in the Arab world before the state of Israel, they had a better life than living in their own what you call the state of Israel what today. What are you talking you about? Why. We because you get the power, you destroy the world. This is Muslim yeah. supremacy. I'm the greatest fan of Muslims. I love Islam, I love Muslims. But when you say, I'm only good when I'm under you, I say nonsense. I don't right. want to be your divinity. Right. I want to be your equal. No, I want to be your equal. You. Let me answer you. I'm not saying you personally, but I'm saying those who have used the state of Israel to be a discriminated state and racist state even among the Jews themselves. Even if you are a, a, a dark person, a black person, a black and Jew is different than a white and Jew in Palestine. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, yes, yes, I'm against the Jews when they were thrown out of Libya, I'm against that. And the Jews, they have the right to come wherever they want to go. If there are poor in Libya, they have rights in Egypt and elsewhere. Because Islam does not exempt the Jews not to live in Islamic State. Listen. I didn't say it was. You're making me only you. I don't want to be under you. I want to be equal. I am equal to you. We're similar height. We're both human. We both bleed red. Why should I be your dimmy? Yeah, so why should I be your dimmy? Why can't I be your equal? Why should I be dimmy? Can I be the caliph? Can I be the caliph over you? If you implement the law. No, no, no. Can I be a can a Jew be a caliph over a Muslim? Yes or no? no it's, not allowed. it's a yes. Exactly, it's not allowed in Islam. I want to live in a state where Jews and Muslims are equal. In Israel, a Muslim can become the president. You want to share the Khilafah? You want to share the Khilafah? I don't want to share the Khilafah. I don't want to conquer any. This is the difference between Islam and Judaism. Islam, Islam believes it's a universal religion for the world, yeah? And the religion, and the religion, and if you understand Islam, I understand Islam. You would understand who is Moses and who is Jesus. Jesus is Moses. Salam, and, is our Nabi. He's your Nabi. That's fine. I don't want to live Abraham under you. Abraham was a Jew. Salam. Abraham was alayhi salam was a Jew or a Christian. He, he was, we believe that he wasn't even Jewish. He was, Abraham alayhi salam was came Jew. before Abraham, Judaism. Abraham was not a Jew nor a Christian, but he was a straight believer. A straight but he wasn't a Muslim either. He wasn't a Muslim. English, English, please, for camera and for me. Now you claim I'm talking about Abraham. Abraham. Was he a Jew? Was he a Christian? I just answered your question. Where does Judaism come from? Where, where, does Judaism, where does the Judaism come from? Where does the name come from? Judaism. Can he be a president in a Muslim country? This is his question. Either in a caliphate or a Muslim country. Can I become the leader? I'm not allowed into the cities of Mecca and Medina. I'm not allowed to practice Judaism in Saudi Arabia. And you want to talk to me? Yeah, about a you can visit. Why you wanted to go to Mecca and Medina? Because, because, because I want to. Be, I want to go to the Kaaba. I want to go to the Kaaba. Why can't I go to the Kaaba? Why? Okay, let me ask you why. Because it, because your race, your religion discriminates against me, no. and I don't you want to be discriminated against. You are I want to be equal. If you are the followers of Moses and Jacob and Abraham and Jesus and Muhammad, then you can't go to God. So, I'm sorry, you can't. You can. I don't. Can. I can't. I don't follow Muhammad. You are discriminated between. So, so, okay. So for the camera, this man is saying that I, as an Orthodox Jew that believes in Judaism, he's saying and claiming that I can go to the 
Rabba, and I can go on hard. And you accept Why would you want to do it? And you accept Abraham. And you believe in all of that. You're lying. You're literally lying. And you know you're lying. There's big roads that say non Muslims not allowed. Why, listen to this you to no, 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 you listen to no, this, no, you're lying, no, you're lying. No, no, no. If you want to talk about the history of Kaaba, I will tell you no, even no, 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 no. We're not here for a history lesson. I'm no, asking you straight question. Why you, you said I, you said I was better under Islam. No, you said I was better and I said if I'm equal, happily, but I'm not equal. So you, you can go if you believe in Moses. And you believe in Jesus yeah. and Muhammad. And you believe in Muhammad. But I don't oh, believe in Muhammad. That's then you are not alone. Then you are not. If you don't believe in, believe in Muhammad, if you don't believe in Muhammad, then you don't believe in Moses. And then you don't you don't believe in Jesus because you discriminate. Your own prophet didn't believe that. Your own prophet didn't believe that. Muhammad said. Muhammad says. Muhammad said. Allah Khatib. Allah Khatib. We believe the prophets. All of them are on the same path, the same religion. Don't you accept that? All of them. What was the religion of Moses? What was the religion? The religion of Moses was Moses, not Judaism. We don't have Judaism. It's not a Jewish. So word. where did you come? Where did you bring it from? Okay.